college football galore, but we are thrilled to have former Army cadet star quarterback Ahmad Bradshaw with us on 365 Sports. He joins us here uh, on the show. And, of course, the game. To me, the greatest rivalry in all of college football is this Saturday, Army, Navy, and Ahmad Bradshaw. Ahmad, thank you very much for your time, and we appreciate your insight. Uh, also, thanks to the U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company and Captain uh, Kai Kizzy. What does the game, when I hear or you hear Army, Navy, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it's everything. Like, this is the one time in the year where you can go against your rival, which is arguably the best rival football uh, game in the country, but it's the one time where you get to gain those bragging rights for 365 days a year. I tell everybody when you first come to campus, the first thing you see is beat Navy at West Point, and I'm sure they have their theirs up as well. But it's the first time, the one time only you get to gain those bragging rights. So it means everything. Ahmad, you were part of the team that broke a very long streak, uh, and I watched. Uh, maybe more of that game than I had time to today on YouTube, uh, just trying to find highlights. And then, I, you know, you know how you fall in a YouTube hole. You can get there for a while. But that one in the snow where you guys were wearing the all-whites had to be one of the most fun but difficult games ever. Can you take us back to that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, a lot of people always say that was the first time the Army got camel right. And uh, I see why they say that. Um, I was watching film, and you could barely see the players from the, uh, the bird's eye view. And, I mean, that game was just amazing. It was uh, – we definitely got camel right. It was uh, tough because it was so cold and slippery, and, you know, we prided ourselves on protecting the ball. And that was honestly, being from Chicago, my first time playing an organized game in the snow. So it was definitely a challenge. You know, Ahmad, when we talk to to guys, often coaches, players, what have you, they always talk about how you try to keep every week the same, right? You're not, like, looking at the opponent. You're not looking at, like, the star player on the other side. Just everything's kind of the, the same as far as the focus goes. Is that harder during Army-Navy week? And, and what is it, a game week like leading into this one? Yeah, so this game, I was going to talk about this at the probably when you asked, you know, who did I think was going to win. But, I mean, it's not really hard. It's really – Two familiar teams, right? We know each other very well. And this is a probably a fun time. There's a lot of activities going on at school. But the hardest thing for us, I guess, is just staying focused and, and not letting those activities distract us. So two familiar teams knowing each other. It always comes down to who's which quarterback is going to perform the best, um, who's going to make the least amount of mistakes, and who's going to win the turnover battle. That's what this game comes down to every year, regardless of how well or how bad the other team does against other opponents. Uh, these two teams, Army and Navy, that's what it comes down to every year. Ahmad, they had won 14 straight until you crossed the goal line. I think six minutes left in the game to take the lead. What? And I, there was still time left. Can you try to describe that moment and what that meant? Yeah, so, I mean, the moment was just electric for sure. It was second and eight, I remember it, and we had about, you know, four more yards to go after the first down, but I was just trying to make sure I protected the ball. You know, I trusted my offensive lineman. I trusted the, the fullback. It was Andy Davis, and then at the time, I remember the play like it was yesterday, and it was definitely an electric moment. Um, one of our teammates actually passed away earlier that year, Brandon Jackson, uh, his number was 28. So when I go, when I went back and looked at the film and realized it was actually second and eight, I always say that he was with us in that moment whenever people ask me about that that touchdown. So it was definitely uh, he led us to that to that victory and helped us break the streak. Ahmad, what is uh, on the board? There doesn't appear to be enough running backs in that formation on the board for that to be Army. <laughs> yeah, <kind of> so. <laughs> This board was just going to talk about what I was what I was breaking down earlier. But basically, these are some of the key players. I'll walk you through it top to bottom. It's probably a uh, reverse on your screen. But these are just some of the key players that I, that we, we, we should look for during the game. But, you know, T2, Tyre Tyler, Jamel Jones, I actually coached him at the prep school. Um, they're, they're, they're two great quarterbacks with, with, you know, talents that are opposite of each other. I think Jamel is better at throwing. I think uh, Tyler is a better at runner at protecting the ball. Uh, Brahim Murphy, obviously, is I, I coached him at the prep school as well, but he 
is a very fast, and when he gets in the open field, hopefully we can get him the ball a lot tomorrow. If, as you, if you've been watching the season, you know he's a, an electric player. Jacoby Buchanan, the bust, the 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 be back leading this offense. Uh, he'll be a highlight, and then Isaiah Austin. I don't know if you saw his his, his one handed catch going viral everywhere, but uh, we got some big big players on offense. And even the defense, Marquell, a great leader, and Andre Carter brought it on the D-line. Um, these are some of the guys that just to look for during the game. And this is our base offense and defense. So, you know, the offensive lineman, the quarterback, be back two slots and two receivers. We can obviously, you know, manipulate this to make it fit any scenario or position. But the defense, Navy and Army are very familiar with one another. And like I said, it's going to come down to these three things. The QB performance, whichever QB protects the ball, you know, performs the best, gets the ball to the right people at the right time, the least amount of mistakes, and then a turnover battle. That's really what it comes down to every year. So that's what I had up on this board. I wanted to show you all, you know, before we got off. Well, and it, that's awesome. Ahmad, we, we appreciate all that. Uh, again, former Army and I don't know if they say former Army quarterback Ahmad Bradshaw with us on 365 Sports. So there's a lot of Texas representation as well. In fact, Jamel, Jamel Jones from the Colony up near Fort Worth and much more. When you were offered a scholarship to play at Army football, to go to the U.S. Army, like go to, to West Point, what was? do you remember? I saw this in a story written about you. What was your reaction to that? Uh, I think when, my, when, when Coach Waugh came to recruit me, and he kind of, he was like, hey, yeah, I want to offer you a scholarship to West Point. And I was like, oh, thanks. And then I kind of whispered to my high school coach, like, hey, coach, what's West Point? <laughs> um, yeah, so if, if that's the story you're talking about, that's probably what uh, what you read. I didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah, that I was, was really had my, that was a story. Yeah, that was it. It was out of the Chicago mm -hmm. Tribune, I believe. It's a great story about your life. Yeah. Uh, by the way, U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company is one of our title sponsors. And, and Captain Kai Kizzy, you know him. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and that your mom's first name is Kizzy. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. It's spelled uh, K-I-Z-Z-Y. -Z. I believe Captain Kizzy is Z-Z-I-E. -E. So it's a little different spelling. But, yeah, that's her name. So what does it mean to just represent West Point? Oh, it means everything. You know, West Point has done so much for me, you know, as far as changing me, making me think a certain way, transforming me into a leader, not only in, you know, football, but in the classroom, in my community, for my family. It is if if you talk to a lot of cadets, they'll tell you that, hey, I'm different just by being one year at the academy than I was when I was back home in high school. So it means a lot to go out and represent the the, the leadership you know, laboratory of the world. And when you, whenever you go outside or whenever you're in public, you always remind, you're, you're reminded that this is on my back. You know, I sometimes wear my ring. I don't have it on in the house today, but when I leave, I typically wear it to remind myself of all of those lessons that I learned. And when I'm outside, if I have to make a leadership decision, this is how I'm going to do it with what, what I learned at West Point. Ahmad, you, you talked about coaching at the prep school. That's kind of an interesting thing uh, that the, the service academies do have is the, the prep school and a pretty necessary thing, isn't it? Um, yeah. What is that like, especially you getting them so early on in their, in their military career too? I mean, that you, you're kind of seeing that wide-eyed or what is going on uh, from the first-year cadets. Yeah, so as a, as a prepster, we call ourselves prepsters, um, we typically get a one-up not necessarily, you know, better being better than the other cadets that come directly because they have a lot to offer, um, as you can see. But as a prepster, you kind of gain a physical advantage because it's kind of a red shirt year, you know, for the for the athletes. And then you also get a refresher on academics whilst while still transitioning and learning all of the military things that you have to do the following year. So. When I came in as a plebe, a lot of my classmates were panicking, you know, during basic training is very challenging and tough, but I was able to like keep them calm and say, Hey, I can help you make your bed. I can teach you how to shine shoes. And, and the trade-off is they'll teach me, you know, things educational or they'll help me in a class that I may be struggling in. So it's definitely a trade-off for physical and educational things, but it was definitely uh, beneficial for me and all my prepsters. 
Ahmad, it, you know, there's a lot of cool scenes in college football, a lot of cool backdrops, but it always seems like this game has one of the cooler backdrops and just the, the familiarity that you spoke to, uh, the the brotherhood that you, you've spoken to as well. Uh, but what's it like to just suit up and run out onto the field uh, with this game, knowing, you know, who's in the stands, knowing all of your, your brothers and sisters and everybody that's that's involved uh, on both sides? Like, just is, does that feel different, at the way that it comes across to, to just, you know, a, a bystander like me watching on television? Yeah, definitely. Um, I visited a lot of college campuses and, and don't get me wrong. There's, you know, a lot of different brotherhoods and a lot of different things. But the thing that I appreciate about Army football, you know, win, lose or draw, we have each other's back no matter what through a lifetime. It's not just a, a four year brotherhood or a six six year brotherhood, however long you're at the school. You know, you, you get old grads reaching out to you from the class of 76, the class of 77, and you never heard of these guys. And then you meet them and you learn so much about them and their experiences and how the core has changed over, you know, however many years it's been. But the brotherhood is definitely something that matters and it's something that you feel when you step out on the field. Ahmad, when you were younger, you saw a lot of things that were bad in this world and also had to suffer through tragedies with friends and cousins and stuff like that in, in the south part of Chicago. Uh, to be where you are today, to be able to, what your mom did raising you as a single parent, uh, can you kind of discuss what role, the obvious role she had in your life and what she's meant to you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll, My mother is like my rock. She is the reason I am who I am today. I remember watching her work from eight in the morning to five at night and then going to night school from 6.30 to 9 p.m. And I tell people that, hey, it was a point in my time where, where my dog didn't know who she was. So we had to get rid of him because he would bark at her when she come home at night. <laughs> she was working so much. But um, yeah, watching her, you know, do what she did, make sacrifices for me. And then we would compete academically just the level of discipline that she instilled in me as a, at a young age, uh, you know, hats off to her because a lot of women don't have that structure that, you know, that a man may provide being in a household, but she was able to give me not only the academics, but the physical structure, the day-to-day -day things that I needed to be a, a, a respectful young man and a, a contributing citizen. So in the article that I read from Teddy Greenstein, uh, uh, Greenstein from the Chicago Tribune, it mentioned that you were a chest, a chest enthusiast. So my question for you, is there anything comparing that from chess to running the triple option the way you did in football? Absolutely. I think uh, I think everyone should play sports or some type of board game. You know, I think it's an analogy for life. You know, chess is all about strategy putting yourself in the best position and anticipating someone else's move who is also trying to do that, right? It's, you're trying to win this game. And, and the same thing in football. All option is, like this base lineup is just the basics. We're, we want to line up guys to put us in the best position to force the defense to kind of move their self and make them think they are in the best position for themselves and not and do something that they don't know that's coming. So it's the same thing in chess. Like when I, when I play chess, I'm thinking three moves ahead. I'm thinking, hey, if I position myself like this, what is the best move you're going to do to position yourself to attack me? And I want you to think that this is the best thing for you so that I can know, you know, how to move forward. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely comparable. Ahmad, what's your what's your Army career like now? Or where are you? What's your future hold? <laughs> yeah, so I actually uh, tore my ACL. We were deployed to the border doing a border mission. And uh, I tore my ACL doing some physical requirements uh, meniscus. So I actually got medically discharged from the army, uh, this past October. So I'm actually transitioning out. Uh, the army has done nothing but great things for me. Like West point. I'm here stationed at Fort Campbell. I'm an artillery retired artillery officer. So definitely grateful for what the army has done for me, but now I'm transitioning into the civilian world. So, Ahmad, uh, you pointed out that whiteboard, and you, you pointed out a couple of things for us. But uh, as we, we look at this game coming up uh, this weekend, what are some things that are that are of focus to you? What are some some things that matter uh, heading into this game as far as the the you know teams themselves and the game itself goes? Yeah, just one game that I compare or that I look for to see how these games are going to end is the Army Air Force or the Navy Air Force game. I watch how both of us perform – against Air Force because it's kind of you can kind of see what they're going to anticipate, what new plays they have in, and how we're going to play the same way. And obviously, we both lost to Air Force, but 
some of the things I think Army is going to have to do is protect the ball. We had five, I think we got five turnovers this year on the ground and two interceptions. And uh, the same with Navy. Like, they're going to have to protect the ball. Whichever team, whichever quarterback gets the ball to the right guy at the right time is, is going to be the successful team. And winning a turnover battle is the number one difference in the winner and loser in this game. Ahmad, will you be at the game since you're at the, the prep school? Will you be there on the sidelines in the stadium? No, unfortunately, I will not. So when I coached at prep school, it was in 2018. Okay. So Jamel Jones, the quarterback that's a senior now, he was a prepster when I was coaching back then. So um, I won't be at the game just working on this transition and getting getting in the best position moving forward. But, yeah, I'll definitely be watching it. Well, you brought up Air Force there a second ago. We uh, are here in Waco, and Baylor, based here in Waco, they're taking on Air Force in the bowl game here in a couple of weeks. So what kind of challenge are they in for? I mean, I know it's a lot tougher to face Air Force when it's a regular season game and you've only got, like, that short turnaround, right? They've got a little bit of extra time, but that's still that's still not the easiest team to prepare for, is it? Yeah, no, absolutely not. Uh, you know, a lot of big schools have – a lot of advantages against, you know, academies when it comes to not being able to not having to abide by certain rules and 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 sleep and, you know, different class schedules and, and those type of trainings in the army that we're forced to do. But um, I think Air Force should should perform well because they, they still these teams, their disadvantages, they don't play this offense every day. Mm -hmm. So when somebody's coming at you to cut block, you still got to know how to, you know, take it. And, and, the, and the defensive linemen are used to coming off the edge, rushing a passing quarterback. And now they got to slow down and, and look for the dive. So it, it'll be challenging on both sides, but I think Air Force will do well. They, they've been playing really good football, and, and they've been throwing it, throwing it really well, too. Well, it is the game. It is the rivalry. It is incredible. I know Air Force won the uh, Commander-in-Chief trophy this year, as you mentioned, and Craig mentioned they beat both Navy and Army. But, uh, Ahmad, it's a, it's a great pleasure and honor to have you on for what you served as, as going to West Point and as – a soldier and what you're doing now in corporate America. Good luck. I think you could go coach again. I think you could go do that. If in <laughs> fact, you ever relied back on something like that, you could do it. And public speaking too. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Thanks thank for you. having me on. Thank you very thank much. You. Ahmad Bradshaw, uh, former army cadet quarterback. He's the one that scored 